Hey, this is Cloud and Sec, your cloud and cybersecurity technology video on YouTube. I'm Andre, and today I want to talk about your cybersecurity program for managing your user risk related to a very popular and still one of the biggest factors to your cybersecurity uh, environment, which is phishing. How are you heading, handling phishing training and ensuring that your users are not getting phished? Well, a very popular approach by cybersecurity leaders and organizations is actually to train your users and train and simulate events on your environment to understand who are actually your risky users and who are potential offenders to being phished, right? And with that, we have to understand what tools allow us to train our users and gauge their propensity to being phished, right? So we need a way to attack, simulate, or simulate attacks to your environment and then create simulated campaigns and then gauge that and, pro uh, and pro provide the necessary tools for them to improve their practices, improve their um, their usage of your, your corporate email and even their personal ones as well. Well, lucky for us, Microsoft includes an attack simulation toolkit as part of Microsoft Defender for Office subscription and Microsoft Defender for Office Plan 2, by the way. And also, if you have E5, full E5, you'll also have access to this capability. Let's dive in and check what it can do for us and what is the user experience for, from one of these simulations. Okay, first and foremost, where can we access this toolkit and this tool itself? It is accessed in the Microsoft 365 Defender portal. On the left-hand side on the menu, we can see all the different sections available to us as administrators. And as I scroll down, I have the email and collaboration section, which pertains to all capabilities to Defender for Office 365. One of these capabilities is exactly what I'm talking and referring to, which is attack simulation training. This is where we as administrators come to create simulation campaigns for phishing attacks to our users. Now, I myself, I've, I've already ran through the initial setup, but essentially what I'm prompted when you first jump into the platform is the ability and the suggestion to create your own initial campaign. You can do so by just going through a few clicks. I did so and it created the baseline credential harvest simulation for my environment. I chose then the scope of users upon which I wanted that particular simulation to be launched against, and it an email was sent out to all the users that I scoped it for. Now, I will not dive into this particular simulation at the moment. Let's just take a step back and understand what a tech simulation uh, can help us achieve. Now, you can look at the public and public information to learn more about it. Here you have the requirements from a licensing perspective that I mentioned before. You also have the uh, expectations in terms of what functionality you can expect, where, and so on and so forth. If you are using cloud native and you exchange online, you have full capabilities, essentially. Now, looking at the attack simulation training dashboard, what do we got? Well, I'm going to skip through the overview because overview is what we get in every single dashboard, number of cards that summarize important information around the environment. What I want to get to is what it can do on the other tabs. First and foremost is simulations. We can create and launch simulations for our environment based on a number of different phishing techniques. When I'm creating a simulation, I'm then shown all the different phishing techniques that I can test my users against. Credential harvest is a common technique where malicious actors creates message with a URL and a message, right? They target the user to click the URL and message and they're taken to a website so that they authenticate with their corporate credentials in that phished website, for example. We also have a, a way to simulate malware attached to emails. And all of these pre and template campaigns here, pre-made campaigns, they come with predefined phishing messages for your your users. So there's not a lot of work that needs to be done if you're leveraging one of these pre-made techniques in here. 
right? So if I wanted to simulate a link in attachment, so this here is a kind of an advanced technique where it's a hybrid of credential harvest and malware attachment, where a malicious actor creates a message with a URL in an attachment. So it's a very particular kind of attack, right? And then inserts the attachment into the message. So the user has to first evaluate who they're dealing with, then they have to download, and then they have to click the URL in a download. So it really gauges that level of user interaction with emails, right? So if I wanted to just simulate and have a look at what this technique looks like from a, a campaign perspective, I can just go ahead and uh, go ahead and create that simulation. And then I can name it whatever I want. And then I can choose uh, the payload and login page. By default, you'll see that there will be a, a, a number of default payloads here as it's loading. And these payload techniques here or payload and login pages, they even tell us what language they're available for the click rate for previous campaigns, but also the predicted compromise rate based on a number of globally uh, gauged other campaigns. Now, it also tells us how many simulations have been launched for this particular payload. So I myself created one, uh, the baseline, which uh, utilized the change in account details. When you click in each of them, you can see uh, an example of what kind of email they're gonna, your user is going to be sent based on this payload. You can have a look at the attachment that is included in this, if any. So there's a docx uh, attachment here created for this particular campaign. You can have a look at the login page that will be sent out to your users to validate what you're dealing and what your users are going to be dealing with. So as you can see, it is very uh, similar to a Microsoft an actual Microsoft login page, and that's what threat actors are able to utilize at some at some point. And then it also summarizes what simulations have been launched with utilizing this campaign and what the compromise rate was. For the time being, I launched a test simulation with that particular payload, but I have not yet actioned it on the user side. We're going to do that in a few seconds. Now, this is an example of one of these payloads, but if I wanted to just launch a campaign with a higher predicted compromise rate for approval request notification. I can just choose that particular uh, payload, of course, before it's good to understand what you're dealing with. So I could go ahead and just understand what I'm dealing with in terms of the payload. This is the template that comes in. You can see that it utilizes variables to try to understand the context of what user they're dealing with. So customizing simulation email to your users. So it makes it more believable from that perspective. And as I scroll down, I can have more information about what's contained in the email head as well. I could go ahead and look at the potential attachments for this payload, much the same as, as what I did before. And you can see that there's, there's going to be a button, there's going to be a, an attachment type of docx. I could go even further to understand what the lo login page looks like. What I'm going to do, though, is just click on next. I'm going to include whatever users I want in this particular campaign. Now, I can't include all users. As you can see here, just include all users. Or I can choose a subset of users based on groups or even uh, actual user names. If I scroll down here, I can see uh, other particularities from my environment that are set up. So in my environment, I have US-based users. So this is one tag that's used to categorize users. So if you have different users in different countries and you want to launch different campaigns based on their country, you can do that. If you want to use different user tags, you can use that too. So the risk level is particularly interesting, interesting when we think of insider use management and how we're leveraging user risk level to assign phishing campaigns. And there's also the fact that the platform, the attack simulation platform is able to categorize repeat offenders. So if your users are actually getting caught by these phishing attempts, and hopefully not by the real things, but if they're getting caught by these phishing attempts, they, and in a number of roles that you determine by the threshold that you determine, they can be put on a repeat offender list. And then you can create simulated and automated simulation campaigns for repeat offenders, for example. So just targeting those users if you want. 
So it's a dynamic list based on the results of phishing campaigns you launched in the past. For my example, I just want to launch this against one particular user. Let me put it in here and go ahead with the next section. The next section, I could exclude users. I do not want to exclude any users because I've already scoped it down to only one user. And then I can choose what to do next, right? Uh, after the, the simulation is done, after the amount of days that the simulation is going to run for, which I choose here at the, at the bottom. So the simulation is going to run for a number of days, but then a training will be assigned to your users that um, that fall prey to this phishing attempt, and they will be assigned a training for uh, for the users, and then you can choose what kind of training do you want to assign to them. Let Microsoft assign the training courses based on the module that we're creating here, the payload, the techniques that we're creating, or we can even customize and have trainings and modules assigned ourselves from the Microsoft catalog if I wanted to. If I wanted to redirect them to an internal uh, URL or even no training, I could also do that. And then I, I have to determine how many days they have to complete that training. And that's the due date at the bottom here. Now I could select a landing page uh, and I can use landing pages from a library that is also part of the attack simulation platform. We're going to get to that later. So this here is leveraging what is whatever was created already by the library. There's a, a number of templates. I, I customized a tenant landing page. I created this here and you can create one here as well. So I could create a new here if I wanted to. So the landing page is a message tweaked, cut, fully customized by you and your team if you wanted to. If you wanted to look like it's an internal kind of uh, messaging, you could. Um, you have to be careful though with how, what procedures you're taking to train users as um, that can lead to uh, misinterpretations in terms of uh, their use of your communications with them in the real when the real thing comes to fruition, right? So be mindful of landing pages in your program that you're pushing out to your users, but it can be done in multiple, there are multiple ways that this can be done. Now, now when it comes to landing page, I'm just gonna choose uh, one of the template ones that has more than 10 languages available for it. Uh, there, and you can see as I scroll to the right-hand side here, uh, when it was, who created it, when it was created, and what, uh, how many other linked simulations are to this landing page. If I wanted to customize a logo, I could even do that. And I could add a logo here to this landing fish landing page as well. So not only does it have to be to look like Microsoft, but it could look like another service that you use or a third party service that may be top of mind from them, for example. Once the simulation is done and they interact with that, you can choose to deliver notifications to users or not, right? So they might not be notified that that was a fish simulation or you can actually have uh, an end user notification customized to your users. By default, we can leverage whatever Microsoft has created for us. I can choose when we want to deliver uh, each message based on their, on their interaction with the, the platform. So I can choose to not deliver it or to lift, deliver after simulation ends. So remember that due date for the simulation, I'm going to establish how many days this uh, simulation is going to run for. So messages would only be sent to users after the simulation ends, or it can be sent out during simulation after a user interacts with the email, be that clicking on a phishing URL or uh, reporting it as phishing, they'll get sent out the positive feedback or uh, a default training reminder and so on and so forth. So here I'm just setting it to twice a week for the training reminder. And then I'm deciding when to launch this simulation. So it can be done as soon as, as I'm done or I can schedule it to be launched after a number of days. And then he, this is where we determine how many days I want to run the simulation for. Um, so you can have the simulation running for seven days or so on and so forth. So this varies based on how many days you expect users to look back into their mailbox to interact with emails. Just be aware of that potentiality here. The lower number, the better, but then you have to run more simulations throughout the year, but be mindful of that. And you could even check here to enable region aware time zone delivery. 
so that you wouldn't send out an email at the middle of the night for a user, uh, for example. So with this, I'm submitting my simulation. Once the simulation is created, it's been scheduled, that's fine. It states how many users you scoped out, only one based on their time zone, it summarizes all the choices we've made. With this, we're gonna see a new simulation in progress here in the list. And this is how you can launch a campaign to your users. Now, let's explore a little bit more of the attack simulation training options before we dive into the user experience, right? So on, on top of uh, adding simulations, we can go ahead and create training campaigns so we can customize tr uh, training campaigns for our users based on a number of different modules from Microsoft. And then I can determine the completion date and, the, and understand how many users have gone through the training campaigns. So you can launch training campaigns as well. And then you can automate uh, the send out of simulations as well. And you can create automated simulation campaigns as well. I myself have created a test payload for an automation here for a payload automation. And then we could leverage that in the future as well. Under content library, that's where we're going to find all the templates that Microsoft created and we could customized. So if you are essentially leveraging this platform for production, this is where you're going to create new content and use this as a way to manage what campaigns have been launched with each of your payloads, for example, and where you can understand predicted compromise rate of each campaigns that have been created, where you can customize login pages. Again, a way to manage all those different uh, potential uh, attack fish simulation campaigns that you are creating. Lastly, under settings, you can define thresholds for the repeat offender threshold that I mentioned before. So if a user falls prey to two consecutive uh, fish, fish simulation attacks, they will be uh, put under the repeat offender uh, list, for example, you can enter and increase that amount to more than two uh, or even more. It cannot be lower than two, however. Now, when it comes to training threshold, this is how many days uh, which training mo each training module uh, will not be reassigned to a user who has already completed it previously. And with that, you can save and go ahead and start better utilize the platform. So this is a quick look at the options for attack simulation training, what it can help you do. Now let's have a look at once you start using them and users start clicking on stuff, you're gonna start seeing reporting and that's that's gonna be part of the beauty of the platform, right? So you understand how users are faring against phishing simulations. Now let's take a stop at the administrator view and let's look at what a user would experience from this. Okay, so this is my user experience. I'm logged in in a virtual host, logged in as one of the users from my tenant. Right now I'm looking at this user's mailbox. I can see here that I have selected in this mailbox this very interesting looking email message. This is coming from Office 365. I can see that the domain looks a little off. I don't interact with such domain. I've never seen this. I've also seen that the message uh, claims urgency so that we can actually take um, take care of this particular error. So we have to take an action according to that. It also uh, include, does include a logos, so it looks somewhat fishy, if you will. I could go ahead and click on that, and I would then see what happens to the user. So at this point, this is the login page that the user would get, um, and they would then potentially enter their email address and attempt to log into this phishing campaign from us. Now, this is a harvest credential campaign particularly, right? So this is why this campaign looks like that. It's a URL and they were given a way to log into the, that particular page. Let's go ahead and log in just for the example.
there you go. When I say sign in, I am didn't get a summarization of the phishing email. And I get a message from Microsoft stating that a training has been assigned to me as the user. So this is my phished user experience when I click and log in into this harvest phishing campaign from attack simulation training. Now, when I look back into this user's mailbox, what they'll get is first and foremost, they'll get an, e uh, an email from Microsoft with a training reminder as soon as they click the URL. So this was even before I uh, signed in to that login page. So as soon as I click, uh, the platform understand that I actually was fished, right? So I, I was fished when I, as soon as I clicked the URL naturally, right? Because that's that anything can happen when you click a, a bad URL. So that's the point. And then I was assigned a particular training uh, based on the policy that we created uh, shortly before this, right? So then I get an email, a reminder so that I can understand when I should uh, do this training by, and that's according to the policy that we created before as well, and so on and so forth. Now, once I logged in, I get assigned a, I logged in, I got an email, a new email even, and that uh, led me to uh, get a, another training uh, course as well assigned to this user. So this is an example of how users' notifications during simulations look like. So they get emails straight after they, they've been fished. If I had waited to notify users until the end of the campaign, that would have taken a few days because that's how long my campaign was set to, to last for and so on and so forth. So this is one of the campaigns I created. Now, what I also did, I created a second campaign utilizing a different technique, which is a malware in an email. So this year, is a different phishing campaign that I, I launched. So it has German language, I believe, and it, it contains a docx attachment. Again, I know that this is malicious. This is from my platform because I launched that campaign. Uh, and judging by my platform, I can see this exactly, this exact message on the login page from the campaign I launched. As a matter of fact, let's go back to the administrator the administrator view of tech simulation training and understand this particular second phishing simulation that I created there. So right now I'm looking at my administrator view. I'm looking at the simulations I launched. So the one I did before was baseline credential harvest. Uh, now this will take a few minutes to update with the actual compromise rate, but it will have some value in there soon. But what I'm looking now is the second simulation I launched and created which is this one here. So this right here, I can have a look at the details of this campaign. And I can preview the landing page and even preview the payload and login page. So let me look at, let me ensure that I'm dealing with this particular campaign. There we go. So this is the phishing campaign that I created. So it has this German language from Michael Zechner. It has a this particular message here. Uh, it has also an attachment. The attachment is called bank details docx. Jumping back in, it, so it's just verifying that this is actually what I'm interacting with as a user, right? So jumping back into my user view, this here is what the email looks like from a user perspective. It has the Gmail domain address, which looks fishy again. Uh, it looks weird. And I, I have then the, the attachment. So what I could do as a user is if I understand it's actually a malicious email address, I could just report it. So how can you report it? You can come into more actions and then under the many options, you have the report button and you can report as phishing. Okay, when you report as phishing, you'll get rewarded as um, a positive feedback. So let me go ahead and just report as phishing right now. There we go, it was reported. Thank you for reporting. As I report, the, that email is taken, it's deleted from my mailbox, and it's found, it's then put into the junk folder for, for this user. And then the administrator would see that the compromise rate for that particular campaign was reduced because a user acted properly. Just before I finalize, actually, 
let's look at what the user receives from a positive feedback perspective. Jumping into the user mailbox here, I can see that they just received an email from Microsoft or from my administrator team stating that this was indeed a phishing campaign and there we go, thank you for reporting it. Um, this is what a user gets on a successful spotting phishing campaign that we created. And it summarizes what the phishing campaign looked like and that it was just a phishing campaign that they passed. Good job, risk user. Now jumping back into the administrator view from this uh, particular environment, after the user reported, I'm looking at that particular simulation for that particular fish, fish campaign. And under the report uh, section of that campaign, I can see compromised users and I can also see users who reported it. Now, after a few, uh, few minutes, the platform will understand that one of the users has reported the message and that user will be put in here and a positive email will be sent out to that user. So that's how, uh, how this platform helps you gauge, create the simulation campaigns, keep track of how users are faring against it, and then assign training modules to them to improve their security, uh, their cybersecurity knowledge against phishing campaigns. So hopefully this video has been informative to you and you have taken the time to understand how attack simulation training works within Microsoft uh, for your user training modules. Thank you.